I just turned 25, and to help me determine what I want for the next 10 years of my life, I asked a few people who I admire to write letters to their younger selves to learn from them. This is how that went. Hey guys, and welcome to episode one of A Letter to My Younger Self. My name is Wabasha Maxine, and today I have the gorgeous Wandia with me on set. And yeah, we're basically just going to vibe, have chill conversations. She is the CEO of Vivo, and in case you live under a rock, Vivo is a retail shop for clothes. Hi, Wendia. How are Hi. you? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here Thank today. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, so basically when we were thinking about the podcast, I was explaining this to you earlier, we wanted to invite guests who would be able to tell a story other than the usual. And that's how you came in mind. So I just want to find out when you were writing your letter, what yes. was going through your mind? Was it something that you were like, I need my huge glass of wine. <laughs> Let me sit down because this is about to be a roller coaster. You know, first it was, I had to choose the age mm -hmm. that I was going to be talking to myself at. Mm -hmm. And um, I chose 20. And then I think I spent quite a lot of time just trying to remember who was I? You at know, what 20. was happening? What was going on in my life? What was on my mind? Mm -hmm. what, was, what was worrying me? What was exciting me? Um, and then, so I just sat with that for a while, even before I wrote the letter and thought, okay, now I know who you are. Yeah. And I can sort of write to you um, knowing who I've become and what I've learned and sort of saying, well, here are the things I would, would have wanted to tell you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you didn't even want to see the questions beforehand. Is there a particular reason why? Because um, I like things to flow naturally. Yeah. I think, you know, if I had seen what your questions are, I would have started trying to already write out the answers mm -hmm. in my head. And it yeah, it's just easier. Well. I'm, not, I'm not very... Yeah, not very good at memorizing. Uh, okay, I, <laughs> so I just wanted it to be natural and yeah, be a surprise, you know, and genuinely yeah. surprised if, you know, if I'm going to be. Yeah. Okay. I think now you can go ahead and read the letter to us. All right. Um, all right. So this is me writing to my 20-year-old self. Dear 20-year-old Wandia, congratulations on your graduation. A bachelor's degree in economics is a good thing even though I know you're unsure about what you're going to use it for. And perhaps the only reason you chose it is because it's the degree your father had. But don't be so worried. Not everyone knows exactly what they want to be or do when they grow up. But trust me when I tell you that even though you'll jump a lot between jobs and wear many hats, you will have a full and incredible life with lots of amazing experiences and stories to tell. And despite your confusion about what job to look for now that you've graduated, I know the bigger weight on your mind is where you're going to live, given that your parents are separating and your mom is returning to Canada. I know that's scary for you because you aren't that close to your dad and you can't imagine living in Kenya without your mom and your brothers. So I totally understand why you made the decision to stay in Canada and to look for work there instead of immediately returning to Kenya. And how lucky for you that you had a close friend in Montreal who invited you to live with her while you got on your feet and that you were able to find a job so quickly once you got there. Getting intimately involved with your 23-year-old boss was not necessarily the best idea, though. Yes, he was sexy and intriguing and had women falling all over him. And yes, he drove the latest BMW M3 version. But in time, you'll come to learn that none of those things really matter if other key fundamentals aren't in place. And when you went through the very painful process of terminating a pregnancy without his support, and later when he got violent, to the point where you had to involve the police, you paid a big price for that decision. And even though you were in a, were in a country where abortion was legal and safe, and you were able to have it done in a reputable hospital, I know it is still one of the most painful things you've ever had to go through. And even though it will take you some years to get there, luckily you'll eventually learn that a man's morals, his integrity, his honesty, compassion and kindness are far more important than how good looking he is, how much money is in his bank account or what car he drives. Speaking of money though, it would have been great if you had learned earlier in life how to manage your money. With that very first job, you could have opened a savings account and started putting aside even 10% of your monthly paycheck. And slowly but surely, you'd have seen those savings grow into something you could use for real investment. But no, instead you blew away your whole salary every month 
Paying your basic bills, yes, but using the rest of it for partying, fun times, and buying very many pairs of shoes. You finally opened your first savings account at 30, but that was 10 years too late. And even at 52, you still have way too many pairs of shoes in your closet. I guess some habits are hard to break. But one thing you did invest in in that early stage of your life, and even before that, was the solid relationships you formed. With the friend who took you in when, when you had nowhere to go. With the friends who rented a van to come and pack up your apartment in the middle of the night and rescue you from that violent relationship. With the friend who came to pick you up from hospital after the abortion. And yes, even the friends you would party with and who would come shoe shopping with you. So I'm extremely proud to tell you that those same friendships are still strong and intact. And in the 30 plus years since you were 20, you and your friends and family have seen each other through thick and thin, through laughter and tears. You have watched each other fall and helped each other get back up again. Your close family and friends have been your rock and it is something you have never taken for granted. It has been said that the quality of your life ultimately depends on the quality of your relationships. And in that area, you invested well, young one dear. You invested very well. Wow. <laughs> I feel like your letter really took us through a whole journey, a lot of emotions. And I feel like I particularly resonate with your letter because it sounds like we were around the same age mm -hmm. when um, who you were, the person you were speaking to. Yeah. So I just want to find out um, why... 20 year old one day is it an age where you feel like a lot of things happened that um, shaped who you are today yeah I mean it was a year that I could identify specific things mm -hmm. like if, if I thought 19 I don't know that I'd have had you know the same incidences mm -hmm. um, or dilemmas facing me you yeah. know that it was a time when I needed to make big choices where to live what to do you know, whether to come back to Kenya or stay in Canada. Yeah. So it, w it was a decision making year. Before we continue, I'd like to say a big, big thank you for all the support that you have shown myself and this podcast so far. If you'd like to support this podcast even more, you can do so by purchasing one of your favorite, A Letter to My Younger Self, March. We have journals and these journals have quotes as well as thought provoking questions that will be able to guide you in your own personal journey. We also have mugs bags, webcam covers, and a lot, lot more. Now back to the podcast. And I've read a lot of your interviews, mm -hmm. and I don't think I've had most of this information before. So why did you decide to share it now? Because you asked. Because I asked. So <laughs> that, that was the trick, just that no one ever asked. No, not really. I mean, people usually, if, if I'm interviewed these days, it's usually from the Vivo story forward, yeah. you know, and it's very business focused. Mm -hmm. and. You know, a few questions around having gone from employment into entrepreneurship. I mean, I get those sorts of questions. I rarely get questions about what I was like when I was when you're a younger. teenager or in my 20s, yeah. And so tell me a bit about your family growing up. How many kids were you? Ah, okay. So I have three brothers, uh -huh. one older and two younger. Um, I come from a mixed race family. My mother's Canadian and my father's Kenyan. Mm -hmm. um, they met because my father was studying in Canada. And so she, when they got married and moved back here, back to Kenya, it was her first time to yeah. visit, to come to Africa. Um, so I think, you know, I've never thought that that necessarily has made me a different person, but mm -hmm. obviously you're influenced by who your parents are. Yeah. Um, my mother, by virtue of being a woman who would marry across race in the 1960s, was already quite a liberal yeah. person. She's very free spirited. Um, she's open-minded. She, she, she raised us in a very free kind of space. Mm -hmm. And it was only when I was much older and I realized, eh, you mean other people that are, are told, you know, <laughs> yeah. what to think, how to behave. I mean, my mother was sort of like, just be yourself, you know? So is um, this the same way you're raising your kids? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are going to watch this uh -huh. and they're going to hear a few things they haven't heard before. So yeah. I'm going to have to... Uh, you know, figure out how to handle that. But they would say that I'm, I'm much too finicky and mm -hmm. I'm, they accuse me of being a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> and don't wear that. You have to, you know, yeah. whatever. So I'm trying, I'm trying really hard to um, allow them to be themselves more. Mm -hmm. 
You can catch all the other episodes by visiting the website listed in the description bar. There, you will find my conversations with my other guests. Each guest shares a letter to their younger self, why those moments were impactful in their lives, the lessons they learned, and the vision they have for their future self. Click the link in the description bar to support this podcast and watch season one of A Letter to My Younger Self.